scholars from across the world gathered on the grounds of Mu Yang Sa Temple in Palolo Valley, Oahu, to imagine a global, non-killing society. University of Hawaii political scientist Dr. Glenn D. Page, author of A Global Non-Killing Political Science, gathered guests from over 40 countries for consultation of this great idea. Now this is a, another action that we conducted in Bibokoboko. So the seminar de Bibokoboko. This is the seminar of Bibokoboko. The seminar de Bibokoboko était destiné aux tutsi congolais. Uh, the seminar that we led in Bibokoboko was aimed to, to Congolese tutsi. On les appelle aussi des banyamulenge. They are also called banyamulenge. Les tutsi congolais et les banyamulenge. Uh, Congolese Tusi and the Banyamulenge C'est un des peuples les plus controversés du Congo There are more, there are people Those are people who are more controversial in Congo Ils sont accusés de beaucoup de choses They are accused of many things Et ils sont à la base de toutes les guerres récentes du Congo and they are at the origin of all the wars that has been led in Congo and in the Great Lakes region. Mais aussi, ils catalysent la haine de la majorité des co de Congolais. But they catalyse also the hatred of the majority of the Congolese. Oui. Les images montrent, montrent, montrent les participants au séminaire de Bibo Koboko. Uh, this image shows the participants at the seminar of Bibokoboko. That's the so the 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 Tutsi Congolese. Huh? Those are Congolese Tutsi. Ils sont peu nombreux les Tutsi Congolais. There are really few Congolese Tutsi. Environ 200,000. Uh, almost 200,000. Uh, leur date d'arrivée au Congo est polémique. They are dead. The time they reached Congo, they came to Congo is very. 1850, on ne sait pas. 1800 or 1950, no one knows. Leur nom, aussi contesté. Their name, Banyamulenge, is also contested. Les uns les appellent des Banyarwanda. Some call them Banyarwanda. Leur nationalité congolaise, leur ex va contester. Their Congolese nationality is also sometimes contested. Toutes les guerres régionales menées, eh, ils ont participé à toutes les guerres régionales. They have participated in all wars that have been led in the Great Lakes region. Guerre de Museveni. The war led by Museveni, the president of Uganda. Guerre de FPR au Rwanda. Uh, the war led by Kagame with the FPR in Rwanda. Ils sont à l'origine de la guerre du Congo en 1996. They are at the origin of the war in Congo in 1996 with Kabila, the father. Ils sont aussi à la base de la guerre de 1998 avec RCD. They are also at the origin of the war in 1998 with the RCD. The rebel movement that led the war in Eastern Congo. Ils se sont révoltés à Bukavu par le colonel Mutebuti. They revolt themselves in Bukavu uh, through Mutebuti uh, Kano. Et jusqu'à présent, ils se battent à Goma à travers, à travers le Kundabatoire. And up to today, they are fighting in Goma with the Kundabatoire, who is the military leader. Ce, ce Banyamulenge, il est tout sans distinction. Banyamulenge, ils ont tout kill sans distinction. Et aussi, ils sont tués. And also, they are killed. Par exemple, souvenez-vous qu'ils ont été tués à Gatumba. Uh, for instance, you can remember that they were killed in Gatumba. C'est un peuple difficile. As a very difficult population. Nous avons décidé d'aller amener, euh, d'aller enseigner là-bas la non-violence. Uh, we decided to go there and teach the non-violence. C'était un risque à prendre, nous l'avons pris. It was very risky, but we decided to go. 
Et ils habitent dans des villages un peu éloignés des autres. Uh, first they do live into villages, into very remote villages that are very far from other people's village. Il fallait monter des montagnes pendant 8 heures pour arriver dans leur village. Uh, you had to climb the mountain for 8 hours to reach their villages. Aussi c'est difficile de les, de, les, de les rassembler. Il fallait les rassembler pendant deux jours. And it's very hard to gather them. It took us two days to get them all together. Et nous, nous avons eu 201 participants. Uh, fortunately, we got 201 participants. Et, qui sont venus des 17 villages qui des montagnes. Uh, who came from 17 villages uh, located into mountains. Parmi, parmi ces participants, Among those participants, il y avait 148 hommes et 63 femmes. There was 148 men and oui. uh, 63 women. Il y avait des militaires. There was also soldiers, des religieux, religious, et des simples paysans. And uh, simple uh, indigenous. Au début du séminaire, uh, at the beginning of the seminar, ils étaient soupçonnés et curieux. They were very suspicious and curious. Nous étions les premiers, les premiers bantous congolais à aller enseigner là-bas la non-violence. Uh, we were the first bantous congolais to reach that place to, to teach non-violence. Mais une chose nous a étonné. But one thing is astonished us. Au début, au début du, du, du séminaire, nous avons posé la question s'il croyait à une société meurtrière. Uh, at the beginning of this seminar, our question was to know if they can believe about a non-violence society. 180 participants avaient répondu oui. Uh, 180 participants said yes. Après l'enseignement, tout le monde avait accepté. After the training, everybody accepted that we can have a society without, non, without violence. Plus tard, nous avons reçu 6400 noms de Banyamulenge qui sont devenus des centres de non-violence. Uh, later after we received uh, uh, 6400, 64,000 nouns of Banyamulenge who have become Members of non-violence. Oui. Pour le pour des recommandations. For the recommendation. Il souhaite des des grandes conférences de non-violence pour tous les Congolais. They wish uh, to make uh, many conferences about non-violence for all Congolese. Oh, je n'oublierai jamais leur joie, leur joie quand nous quand nous les avons quittés. I will never forget their happiness that they showed the time we left them. Oui. Yes. La société non meurtrière est une réalité. Uh, the non-violent society is a reality. Uh, nous allons encore parler d'une de nos actions. Now we are going to add another. Celle-ci, elle touche les enfants. But this one is about children. Elle touche la génération future. It touched the new generation. Cette action nous l'avons menée à, à Casimir. Uh, this action was led in Casimir. Dans, dans la République démocratique du Congo. Uh, in Congo DRC. Casimir c'est le siège de notre association. Uh, Casimir, that's where we have our main office. Il y a environ 20 000 habitants. There are almost uh, 200. 20,000 uh, people. It's a village that has been touched too much with war. 63, 80. 63, 1980. And 1996 up to 2004. Casimir lives a very bad situation. Comme un peu partout dans le Congo. As everywhere in Congo. Comme au Burundi et au Rwanda. Uh, as in Burundi and in Rwanda. La famine y règne. 
Uh, there is hunger, the conditions so difficile. Uh, conditions of life are extremely hard, the sida ferrage. The HIV kills in a high number. Nous avons des enfants soldats. We have children who are enrolled into army. The viols sont excessifs. Uh, rates are extreme, extremely high. Nos régions sont vraiment très pauvres. Our regions, has our regions have become very poor. À Casimir, il y avait deux écoles payantes. Uh, in Casimir, we had two schools. Et presque tous les enfants du village n'étudiaient pas. And almost all the children from, those, the, from the village don't go to school. Parce que les parents n'avaient pas la possibilité d'envoyer d'envoyer les, leurs enfants à l'école. Uh, because their parents couldn't afford to send the children to school. Alors nous avons jugé bon de faire de fonder une école hein, non payante. Uh, we found better uh, to build a school that is uh, non lucrative. Et cette école nous l'avons appelé complexe Martin Luther King. And this school we call it uh, complex Martin Luther King. En créant cette école, nous avons nous avions des, des objectifs précis. Uh, in founding this school, we had some objectives. Uh, sur, sur les images, vous voyez, c'est le jour des proclamations. Ce sont les parents qui viennent prendre hein, le, le résultat de leurs enfants. Uh, those images are the parents who have come to see the result of their uh, children at the end of the academic year. The school year. Uh, cette école a des a des buts précis. Uh, this school have a a direct goal. Permettre aux démunis, aux pauvres, de recevoir un enseignement de qualité gratuit et orienté vers de nobles idéaux. Uh, this to allow poor people to receive also adequate education and uh, participate in the leadership. Former in a generation future, qui agira pour l'avènement d'une société non meurtrière. Uh, to form a new generation that will manage a society uh, with non-violence culture. Apporter un développement socio-culturel évident dans un environnement miné par le désespoir. Uh, to bring a social development, an evident social development culture in a an environment that is undermined by people without hope, but a spirit without hope. Cette école est fonctionnelle depuis 2006-2007. Uh, this school has been working since 2006-2007. Il y avait 103 petits enfants de 5 à 6 ans. There were 103 children uh, ranging from 5 to 6 years old. Pour cette année, il y a encore 80 autres petits enfants qui se sont ajoutés. Uh, for this year, we received again 80 that has been added to the number. Le personnel est constitué de quatre enseignants. The personnel is formed by four teachers. Un secrétaire. A secretary. Le payant. And the supervisor. Et le directeur. And the director. Le programme se compose d'enseignement général classique. Uh, the program is composed with uh, classical teachings avec des programmes aussi de non-violence uh, with some programs about non-violence des biographies des leaders de non-violence Martin Luther King and some biography uh, of uh, Martin Luther King and uh, about non-violence des de, de biographies de Gandhi uh, some biography about Gandhi et des biographies de Glenn Page and of, and of course, uh, Glenn Page. Cette école a quelques difficultés. Uh, this school has some um, difficulties. Comment avoir la prime, la prime de, des enseignants? How are we going to continue providing the teachers? Elle n'a pas de matériel didactique. didactique. Uh, they don't have any material to use for their teaching. The salle de classe. We. We, we ask for classes where to teach. Parce que ces enfants ne parviennent bien à manger à, à, chez, chez eux à la maison. Il faut que l'on donne des soupes, une, une petite soupe. Those children cannot afford even a decent meal at their home. We have to supplement with soup at school. Bref, 
On a, nous aurions pu euh, énumérer euh, en, en large toutes nos actions. Uh, we, we would like to enumerate all our actions. Mais la, euh, les minutes nous sont comptées. But the time is very minimum. En bref, pour affirmer, then we can affirm qu'une société non meurtrière that a non-violence society peut exister can exist en Afrique des Grands Lacs and the Great Lakes region in Africa. Merci. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mabwe and Bagda, for this uplifting um, sharing of the experience and the visual about the work that you're doing in the Great Lakes. Here we are at the end of our second day, and it has been a great journey, we call it journey, so the right in the middle, and uh, we have been through, uh, started with the non thesis, it's sick, it's, it's uh, heard about translations, community awakenings, and there we are. First half we finished with the these scholars talking about their impressions, their inspirations, uh, and then the second half we heard today about the sort of practical application of the book. Very enriching community level experience from uh, Nigeria, from the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, affirming that that uh, a non doing society is possible. So well, this is our opportunity. All of us, you know, I know other end, have been wanting to ask questions and as you've been hearing from the presenters all the time. This is time for any questions you may have or any comments you may have on the thesis itself, uh, translations uh, about the community experiences, and further information you would like to have from the presenters or any other suggestions you have for us before we open to the tomorrow. And day after tomorrow, where we're going to have the lessons from the non killing leadership experiences and uh, focus on the training itself. This is the opportunity. Hello. Um, this question is probably addressed to Glenn. Uh, I'm wondering if there's ever going to come a time when all the translations will be available for free on the web and have any idea of how you would uh, use the new technology the web to, uh, uh, to uh, bolster our, uh, foster our, our objectives in the non-killing world. We were thinking on, on, on the importance, and some of the people that, that spoke during these days have pointed it out, it's really important that now we have the tool, have the book translated into many languages and many, many more translators are to come. Now we have the, the tool, uh, we have to start to think on how uh, making it more widely available and how to apply it. In this sense, uh, many Fidelis were saying of the difficulties of having access to the work and some students in his case, even if it, put, even if it was a cheap an economic edition, it, it's complicated to have it for free. So one, one thing that could be, that could be done is, uh, or the Center for Global Nonviolence or the Future Center, and I, I had some ideas for this Future Center, but I imagine that's for the last day we, we should debate them. But one of the things I think it would be important is to have uh, some sort of a virtual, virtual library in the center, in, in its web page, with all, completely all of the translations that have been done and or are in course, that would help really much, not only to find, uh, to to disseminate and to get 
and m many of the people that are here got to know about um, the, the, the book through the internet. So it's really uh, very important to make it available as widely as possible through, through this mean. On the other hand, uh, it, it's, it would be interesting to explore uh, some new uh, ways that are being developed in the last years uh, in uh, license, uh, in the question of licensing. Uh, without knowing about this, uh, Page has, since the beginning, uh, made available the, the, the book without having to, to uh, put uh, these this kinds of impositions. Now we have uh, a series of, of non-commercial licenses that are made to, to not put burdens into uh, the transmission of knowledge, such as uh, Creative Commons, a copyleft, a series of licenses that could help to make even more widely available this, uh, this work and other associated work. So this is something we should think quite seriously, um, that these translations should, should incorporate one of these kind of licenses. On the other hand, um, this spiritual library should also consider the possibility of uh, making available other works, and for example, uh, Dr. Jose Abueva's work on the Philippine case is, a, in a, is an example of works that are now coming out and, and we have some works also in, in our institute published on non-killing, from the non-killing approach. So it would be an interesting uh, to have a, a place where these, all these works could be, uh, as they are published, made available. And um, not, of course we, we, we need to, to uh, introduce our works in the more wider journals of political science and peace studies or other fields. But it would be interesting that at the same time have a, a library on, on non-killing studies uh, uh, articles uh, or an electronic journal on non-killing studies that could unite all this work that's being done. So maybe this is some of the things that we could discuss and try to, to, to take note of for, for the future. Thank you. Address to Professor Page. They are rather addressed to the others in this hall. Professor Page has done his work. He has given us, he has given to humanity certain revolutionary ideas. But after having listened to uh, the, the wonderful insights during the last two days, I am afraid I have become a little bit of I don't know, I am becoming a little bit of pessimist. <laughs> my, <coughs> my optimism, rather repressible optimism, has suffered a setback. Joking, uh, joking apart, I am overwhelmed by the enormity of the, of the challenge lying ahead. The Congo, fr the friends who talked about their very daring work in your, your country uh, take me to reflect on what are the away new initiatives that should come in the wake of uh, the ideas that have been given to us by Professor, Professor Page. Uh, now let me make a couple of observations about the Indian reality. The, the situation is very oppressive because the power of violence, the manner in which violence is violence has gripped the entire society, right from children. This is what is most uh, baffling me. Even the children have become victims of the all-round penetrating violence. Earlier the situation was not that. It was mostly limited to elders. But now your children have become victims. How do we rescue them from this? What are our actions? We are all talking about refining or reforming the polit uh, 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 politicians and others. But uh, the, the kind of I will not blame globalization or, or anything for that matter. 
but what is happening is violence is per the pervasive violent degrading violence dehumanized violence has taken humanity for a ride and ransom that being the situation what are the concrete initiatives that we should uh, we should reflect or we should think while we are here today and tomorrow so that when we go day after tomorrow poor glen for having given us this idea could not be the sole uh, person to be put on the cross are we re- are we ready to now to face uh, face realities no idea let us be very clear about it no idea or ideas by itself or by themselves would usher in the kind of change that we want we uh, gandhi ji said if you want change you should be ready to become the agent of change the change that you want in others should begin begin with us so we should probably the next uh, today and tomorrow one and a half days should definitely be conscious about what each of us can do back in our own our own places and uh, the 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 wonderful uh, message that we have from the letter pad of center for global non violence is that each one of us is a center for global non violence but then let us be conscious that here is that great thinker philosopher friend guide in this island who has given us this idea so uh, i want each one of us to reflect on this rather than asking asking him questions i am paying to make this question because everybody is addressing him it's good but you have done your duty you have done your duty many years of research very hard hard research i know many of us know that and the, the way that you improved your idea check cross check made uh, your, your book possible and how you have been helping our guiding others in the translation now it is the idea will travel it's in the wind it is in the mind it it is in the soil now how fertile are this uh, soil how competent uh, uh, are our hands how serious are we this is the problem this probably we, uh, each one of us has to reflect on this thank you thank you thanks seven in the footstep of uh, radha krishnan uh, i i will not say about what i think should be done because i think there's uh, time for that for the future of the center of that uh, i'm curious rather about the experiences that have been that we have been listening and the curiosity is this when i listen to uh, fidelis for example i hear and listen to the congo burundi Uh, Pastor uh, Wambi has, has uh, kindly shared with us. Then I ask myself, what was there before the advent of the non-killing political science phenomenon? Is there nothing before the advent of non-killing political science phenomenon? Is there something about non-violence before the advent of this? If there is anything, I want to hear about it. If there is nothing, I want to understand why this book has made such an impact, at least upon you. I think it will help us understand the thesis that Glenn has been pushed all this year. That is, there is a difference between non-killing and non-violence. I listen to a lot of these translations, and unfortunately, some of these translated concepts has been conflated. this conflation of of ideas i don't know what it will do to the thesis itself and i think there are a lot of things to be said about it um uh, if i sound a little bit too critical i'm sorry but i was taught that way a teacher was sitting like right there <laughs> the, the second uh, point i am curious about also is this to me non killing global political science is not an easy book it is a hard work of a political scientist writing in the best tradition of social science the way i was you know the way i appreciated that book 
So my curiosity is that when we translate that, or when some of us try to translate that, at the level of translation is one thing. At the level of translating this idea to the children, how does that work? In what ways are these notion of non-killing political science translated into the level of young children that we saw? I understand you were saying that there are different components to uh, the school. One is the traditional component, the second is the non-violent component. Within that you have biographies. You know, so I'm, I'm curious about the way in which the idea has been translated to uh, the consumption of young children. If you, know, you could enlighten me or some others on this, I would appreciate it. Would uh, Bidilis and uh, Mr. Mahabe would like to say something on this? Uh, uh, thank you very much for your question. In fact, it seems very interesting. Uh, but uh, for me, I think that you give uh, one of the two answers that I was supposed to give. Uh, one is the one you give se at the second part, at second level. The time you said about the scientific level of the book. Uh, in fact, for the first answer I will give you, we cannot say that there was nothing in our societies. But the structure, the systematic structure wasn't there. Uh, nothing is new. We have uh, religions. We, have, we are a, a, a people that is led by morality. The social morality in our culture ties us, as you can know, we are people tied by culture. And this doesn't show anyone, doesn't tell anyone to kill. But the systematic way of saying it, that's what we got from Professor Glenn. And that's why, that's what we got from Professor Glenn. The way it's structured systematically, the way it's used in applying methods, ways to reach at this goal, this main goal, that is the non-violence. We made some confusion in terms of word. We said it that we couldn't get a perfect word to translate uh, the non-violence, the, the the murder. Uh, uh, in fact, we had a problem, but we tried to go into a philosophical thinking of the book. There cannot be no murder if there is no conflict. For people to reach at the level of killing each other, they have argue first. And this arguing, we see a violation in terms of rights, in terms of doing what this one doesn't want. And this brings people to Fighting. And um, that's the answer uh, I have. And um, if someone can add this, okay. Shit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gracias. Yo creo que el tema de la violencia en el mundo. I think that the problem of violence in the world is the imperiosa necessity to attend. Must be attended very seriously. And I think that in this topic, no we have not connected all those who we should be connected. And I think that uh, we don't have uh, working with us all the people that should be working with us. Muchos países del mundo, incluido el mío, gastan muchos recursos en la guerra y en el uso de la violencia creyendo que es el arma para resolver la, los, los problemas. Many countries in the world spend a lot of money in war and in things related to war thinking that that's the way to solve problems. A pesar de que no soy una entrenada en la no violencia, Creo profundamente en las bondades y en los beneficios de entrenar a la gente en no violencia. Even though I have not been fully trained as no violence trainer, I am convinced of the need of uh, training people in non-violence. Yo creo que tenemos que entrenar muchas personas, niños, jóvenes y adultos, 
en no violencia en todos los países del mundo. I think we have to train a lot of people, children, youth, uh, adults in every single country. We have to train them uh, as far as being able to use no violence. A pesar de que son menos los que usan la violencia, llevamos muchas décadas viendo cómo, observando cómo se usa la violencia para resolver problemas. We know that there are the people that don't use violence are a lot more than the ones that use violence, but the ones that believe in non-violence have been very uh, passive and we haven't just have been just looking to the others to do the violence and we have to do something. Tenemos que trabajar todos para vincular más, primero a nuestros gobiernos y a las eh, instituciones internacionales que apoyan ciertas eh, tareas en beneficio de las comunidades para que se vinculen más al trabajo y la no violencia. We have to work hard to get our government and also the international institutions to become more involved in non-violence. Si bien es cierto, las Naciones Unidas trabajan por el bien de la humanidad, creo que le falta vincularse más a la no violencia y disponer de mayores recursos para atender el trabajo de no violencia en el mundo. I think the United Nations is doing a lot for the world, but I think they have to put more effort in non-violence and they have to put more money to, for the non-violence uh, development. Tenemos que llegar a esas instituciones, a esas organizaciones internacionales. Tenemos que vincularlas con más fuerza a la financiación y al apoyo de la tarea de entrenar en no violencia. We have to be able to reach all of those international institutions and ask them to support the, the, the training of people in, in non-violence. Tenemos varias herramientas poderosas para ayudar a hacer que la gente sea menos violenta o use menos la violencia. Uno, el libro del Dr. Glenn Pace, por supuesto. We have several powerful tools to, to train people in non-violence and of course one of them is Dr. Glenn Pace's book. Los conocimientos y la tarea que han venido desarrollando eh, en la no violencia quindiana, el doctor Lafayette, el capitán Charles Alfin y otros muchos, y lo mismo los de la teoría gandiana en no violencia. Todas estas herramientas tenemos que ponerlas al servicio de entrenar mayores, mayor número de, de personas en el mundo. The experience that uh, doctor Lafayette, that Captain Alfin, or those that, and like Dr. Radhakrishna, that have been training people in India, we have to put uh, all of those, uh, no, all of this knowledge to the possibility of many more people. Y creo que ese es el camino que debemos ir recorriendo todos los que estamos aquí presentes y muchos que no han podido estar o que no, han, no, no debían estar por otras circunstancias. And I think that all of us that are here and many others that couldn't come or but probably are willing to help us is what we have. To. Ustedes y yo estoy segura conocemos varios casos de personas que se transforman cuando son entrenadas en no violencia. Probably you all know uh, people that have changed a lot, have, they have suffered a real transformation after being trained as a no-violent. En nuestro país, y concretamente en nuestro departamento, hemos hecho algunas poquitas cosas para entrenar personas en no-violencia, y creo que esa semilla que ha quedado tiene que seguir germinando. For example, in our state we have trained a, a few people and uh, we have seen the, the results and we have, we, I think we have to continue doing that for a long time. Hoy que tengo la oportunidad de ser senadora de la república me he propuesto que el año entrante debe estar entrenado todo el congreso de la república de Colombia en no violencia para que nos convirtamos por lo menos en una guía para los demás colombianos y colombianas. So being a senator of the Colombia of Colombia, I, I, I put this goal for myself. This goal I want all the Colombian Senate 
to be trained the next year so they can be the ones that may guide the Colombian people. Y debo decir con vergüenza que yo misma no he podido leer el libro del doctor Ben Price porque no está traducido al español. Pero ahora que vayamos a regresar a Colombia, nos vamos a proponer, Luis Javier y yo, de adelantar las tareas para poderlo traducir y, si es posible, editar en un buen número de ejemplares. Y tengo que decirles que estoy orgulloso de que no he podido leer el libro porque no está en español yet. But I promise you that we, I go back with Luis, we are going to make a big effort to get a book translated and available to the people in Colombia. Dense, dense, dense en cuenta de la necesidad de tener herramientas que lleguen a todas las culturas, a todas las lenguas y a todas las religiones, herramientas de no violencia y de, y de no matar. Because we have to provide tools for non-violent and non-killing training for all people kind of uh, religions and uh, knowledge and uh, schools and all kinds of people in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Beria. As uh, you know, spoke about the, how to uh, involve government and international organizations in the training of non-violent, non-killing trainers uh, and also this unique uh, appeal action to protect train politicians, you know, senators that I mentioned about in Colombia, training the senators uh, in the nonviolent conflict resolution. We need that kind of leadership. That would be a very good model for us, all of us to follow with our politicians. Tell them that that can be done. And uh, I'm sure tomorrow we'll be talking again uh, on this subject with uh, Bernard, Altum and others talking about various training models they have uh, adopted in respect in their different ways. But I think it's a very important. I, I, if you don't mind, I would like to sort of plug in here a little thing about I'm personally involved with in that. In Canada, we have a boom movement called Canadian uh, Department of Peace Initiatives. And we are trying to uh, convince the Canadian federal government that they should have a federal department of peace in the ministry with a minister for peace uh, in the cabinet and of five pillars of the department one of the main pillars is creating a civilian peace service canada which will have thousand or so conflict resolvers you know as a part of the peace force uh, which will be part of the multilateral international UN peace So we are asking the government and we are working on that, trying to develop what kind of values and competencies need for such a service. So, and, and this movement is another, in about 27 other countries, and that's where, that's the core of the Department of Peace. So that's a, my appeal actually to those of you and you're in your respective countries push for this kind of a civilian peace service as a, not, uh, as you said, non-violent peace force work, you know. But in this case, we are saying the governments should support it because when you do it for the 10, 15, 20 people, you can do it in church basement. With everybody following their conscience and uh, working at the, in a small way. But if you're trying to develop this, one alternative to that is, um, is for government funding to you know, help us develop those programs. So sometimes it's not possible for get money from the foundations. I would like rather my taxpayer money to be spent on that. Sorry for this mention uh, on my side. I have a mic. Oh, okay. I just want to say, tell us that. Uh, us? Yes. We have a mic here. Uh, I've been thinking about the, uh, the questions, uh, and uh, I think the, the uh, strength of this book is the uh, unifying force. I'm dreaming is that when I go back to St. Paul, Minnesota, I'd like to make like a commission of a non-killing society where every, every advocacy group who agreed with, okay, let's make non-killing society, what can I do, can we do? And we make 
this book as a unifying force. Because what, if you see the uh, uh, inmate uh, advocacy movement, that in, include all kinds of things, education, housing, human rights, legal actions, uh, health, children's care, all those aspects has to be addressed to make this one person's uh, recovery. So if we can make a commission where the, all the advocacy groups agree this goal of let's make one less people killed next year. And with that goal, we work together. And if you find an issue, we unite together to approach legislator or governor or whoever. Because if we unify, we have more power. So I think that a question of yours, I think this book I see as a unifying force. So my mission is to bring that idea to uh, Twin Cities and, and whether I can do that or not. And that's up to me. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not quite sure of what uh, I have to say now, but I was uh, to respond to what uh, Dr. Chinwan said concerning what was there and uh, the changes that we now see as a result of uh, the advent of the book in an economical edition in uh, Nigeria. I remember that when we were growing up, uh, very small, uh, it was difficult for us to see uh, corpses. In fact, we were not allowed to see dead people, you know. And uh, in my local language, we have the word for killing. But up till now, uh, we don't have any word for non-killing or non-killing. At least I don't remember of any word that can really capture in my local Ngene language. Ngene is a dialect in Ijo, and I'm from the Ijo uh, community uh, areas uh, in, in the Niger Delta. So, uh, but the question is at what point did this culture of accepting violence in the Niger Delta, uh, 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 you know, began. This culture of seeing dead people as a normal thing. So there was nothing actually to use to reverse, you know, something, uh, a program that um, people had to do with passion, not just because you want to run an NGO or you want uh, you're a professional NGO administrator, something you want to do because you have this passion to reverse uh, the way people see violence in my own community. But with, with the book, with the coming of uh, Glenn's book, and with the publication of the Nigerian uh, edition, it's been quite so easy to think through on how to passionately uh, engage uh, people, young people, to begin to uh, see violence, and maybe see killing, which is an extreme, extreme form of uh, violence, as evil something that you should not even think about you know so i don't know if i answer the question i think one of the two questions uh, uh that had raised was one was how do we do non killing global political science which is a book of a political scientist written in the language of political scientists and how do we popularize it and make it accessible terms of this language and actions to the ordinary citizen. And I think you answered that. I'm, I'm just saying that, I'm just trying to quote the question again. 
And as uh, Pastor Mabe has done in uh, BRC with his uh, seminars, I would be very, I would very much welcome if there is some sort of a manual, you know, which you use uh, for your seminars because it's drawn from the book, which could be used by others who want to run similar seminars.